everybody. I'm Erica Yenzel. I'm the Senior Vice President here at the College and I'm also an Oregon State University Master Gardener. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have about growing lavender while we all get started with the distillation. Um, Doreen will probably talk you through the, all the steps but it takes quite a while once we get started so we'll have lots of time to chat. Well, hi everybody, I'm Doreen. I'm president of the American College of Healthcare Sciences. Thank you so much for coming today. It's really fun uh, to see so many people turn up at, at rather short notice yeah, and spontaneously. And uh, great to see familiar faces and uh, students coming by. That's wonderful. Um, what I want to do today is uh, gather the, uh, the lavender. And this lavender here is the Lavendula angustifolia. So it's the considered the true lavender, whereas the lavender on the uh, on the verge is, as you can see, a, a different looking, a different type of lavender, and that's lavender. And we'll talk a little bit about those differences in a bit. But today we're going to focus on the uh, on the lavender angustifolia. It um, it's a little early this year. Uh, you know, the end of June is quite is quite early but we had a very nice season where it it was perfect for lavender and that there was some early spring rain and a lot of warmth and that really brings lavender on quickly so um, uh, we're having to you know we would normally have picked this during our open house lavender day but we had to move it up a little bit we don't want to miss the right time to pick lavender for essential oil and when the flower is at this stage is just perfect. There's just a little bit of flour still not out and most of the oil is in the flour. So that's uh, what we're harvesting today. Of course, when we harvest, we want to also think about retaining the plant. So we don't want to cut too low down and we don't want to cut too high as well. So I'll show you the best, uh, the best way to cut. Lavender is a member of the um, Labiatae, Lamiaceae family, and an interesting thing about this family is the square stem. So um, just take a look at, at the way this plant looks as you're harvesting it. Um, there are bees, so the bees won't hurt you, but just tell them that you're going to take the flower and <laughs> gently brush them. You know, obviously don't touch them, but just sort of work gently around them. Is anyone allergic? Okay, good. Good question. Shall we be <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and um, around 10 o'clock on a, on a sunny day is the perfect time to harvest lavender. Every plant is a little bit different. So for jasmine, for example, you've got to harvest in the morning, like very early. In the morning. Five o'clock in the morning. So rose. Not yeah. <laughs> rose. I actually went and uh, learned how to harvest rose in Turkey, and we were up at five o'clock doing it. And pretty much by 10 o'clock it's all over. And if you don't get the plant at that time, you lose a lot of the essential oil. And as the day heats up, the oil evaporates into the atmosphere. So you don't want to leave it until like two o'clock in the afternoon. The oil is even higher in the plant if it's a cloudless day. So this is perfect. If it's a cloudy day, it can reduce the oil content. If it's a windy day, it can reduce the content. So when I woke up this morning, I read the newspaper, it said 19 knot winds. I was like, oh brother, you know, that is too windy for essential oils. But fortunately we're sheltered here and it's not affecting us. So all of these factors are important to consider if you're growing a crop of lavender to really get the best yield from, from your plant. Some other things to think about. Um, ideally, lavender was originally sourced from the Alps in France and uh, it is said that the very best lavender comes from about 4,500 feet above sea level uh, from the Alps of, of France and preferably from wild lavender. Now you might wonder why that is. What makes a good lavender good lavender? Well, you know, I'm a great believer in, in liking the way something smells, but we also have to really think about what are the constituents in here that make it therapeutically valuable. And there's a constituent in lavender, it's an ester, and it's called linalool acetate. And the linalool acetate is an anti-inflammatory, it's a wonderful um, uh, uh, constituent, 
and it has to be at a certain level in order to make it high quality lavender and ideally it should be above 40 percent so when lavender is grown at around 4500 or above sea level it it just naturally develops this really high ester but with the right conditions and the right there's that wind <laughs> and the right variety you can actually still produce a really good quality lavender uh, at less than 4,500 feet. I have actually been up into the Alps above uh, Nice and spent time with a distiller there who would go up into the mountains and harvest lavender with her husband. And it was interesting because the lavender they were harvesting was actually seeded, which I had never seen before. In my opinion, it was way past ideal lavender picking conditions. But it was the most exquisite lavender I have ever smelt. When you inhaled it, you just felt like crystals were moving up your olfactory passages and exploding in your brain. I mean, it was just wonderful. So it's a very interesting plant. And, and, and not to interrupt you, but there's actually a video of um, one of those trips. Right, 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 right. On the YouTube channel, if you want to take a look at it. It's kind of fun to see the differences of how they do it in the authentic, traditional method right. up in the Alps. Right, so... Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about just briefly is, you know, talking about ideal conditions, if you're thinking of growing lavender, and of course this is where Erica's expertise comes in because she also has a lavender farm, um, but it really likes a, a, a soil that has like silica and calcium and lime. So like on this front bed, you'll see a lot of sort of white on the ground. We actually uh, mulched with uh, oyster shell. Uh, we lime the area and um, that just also helps to produce uh, a, a nice quality plant. Erica, was there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, we can talk about it while, we, while we're cutting, but the most important thing for growing lavender in Oregon is drainage. Lavender hates wet feet. So the biggest problem here is um, root rot or if I top through a root rot. So the best thing you can do is improve the drainage of your soil and there's specific things you can do depending on your specific soil and you can get a soil test that'll help you. They're pretty easy to get done, they're pretty inexpensive and well worth it. Because uh, there's nothing worse than planting a plant and seeing it die and not knowing why. And in Oregon it's quite often because you've not got good enough drainage. Um, if you've got really poor drainage, like if you're in new construction and have scraped all the topsoil off and left you with like two inches, which a lot of people have to deal with here, you can grow up really successfully in pots. Uh, while you build your soil up. It does really well in raised beds and burns. You'll see here on the front, because this area here actually has really poor drainage. So we added a lot of amendments to this garden. And in the front, we actually burned it slightly, so it's raised up a little bit. That helps, it helps keep the roots nice and warm and keeps them out of the water. And once it's established, it really needs very little supplemental watering. So it's great for xeriscaping. Um, if you're thinking about combining it with other perennials, which looks great with, keep in mind that you want to keep it with perennials that also don't need a lot of water. Because you don't want to have an extra peonies and roses that need tons of water, and then you're watering your lavender to death. So we'll talk a lot about this. There's some differences. The lavender is actually easier to grow in Oregon. It's a little more tolerant because it's a cross from latifolia, which grows at sea level uh, in the wild and the angustifolia which grows up in the Alps. So the intermedia, which is the lavender, is actually a hybrid of those two. And it's a natural hybrid. So um, it is a little more tolerant of variant uh, soil. So that's good to keep in mind. But it is really easy to grow this and it's so gorgeous. And sometimes people think the bees are gonna be taken away from the essential oil. So I just wanna mention the bees don't take away the essential oil. They enhance the plant. So. We love our bees. Yes, when we're not competing with the bees. Yeah, it's a really good sign actually there's so many bees because of course there's a problem with pollen and collapse disorder here and uh, it's a great sign. We're, we're keeping an eye on how many bees we have and we're pleased this year to see so many. Yeah, there really is a problem. Bees are disappearing so um, it's really great to see them. <laughs>